So we'll get going today. So I'm Jason Terry. I'm the athletic director at Alaska. I'll tell you a little bit about my story today. Um, and really, uh, I've coached for 20 years, been in the coaching business 20 years. It's my first year as an athletic director. So still hot off the press uh, and, and still got my feet still wet with coaching. Miss coaching um, a lot. Still find a way to get involved with my kids and whatnot. We'll talk about that through my story here today. But I'm certainly not here to tell anybody how to do things. I'm telling you what's worked for me. And a culmination of 20 years, it's picking and choosing and stealing and, and everything else from every possible coach that you possibly can to take one thing back to your, to your program. That was always my rule when I went to clinics or to have my assistants go to clinics. I don't want the whole thing. If I want the whole thing, I'll buy the DVD, okay? I want one thing that we can take back to our program and apply to our kids, whether to position group or to the program. You gotta decide, is it worth it for the program or will this work just for my linebackers? Or will this just work for my receivers? And when you do it long enough and you keep taking one thing, you keep going to clinics and getting better, things start working, okay? And so that's my only advice in clinic is don't attempt to get the whole thing. You want the whole thing, ask the presenter. They'll always give it. I'll get my stuff today if you want it as well. Okay, and again, it's all stolen somewhere, okay? But I guess I prided myself in 20 years of surrounding myself, or at least attempting to with great people, treating people the right way, and in return, good things happen, okay? And so I guess that's why I'm standing where I am today. I have a great position in Alaska. Um, you know, it's a transition year for me, but it's been good so far. And so um, I'm kind of going through some of those things. I'll talk about some things that I feel really passionate about that you've got to get under control in your programs that I had to, okay? And we'll talk about my story of how I got to where I am today, and then we'll kind of put it all together at the end. So if you got to take a nap after that lunch, I get it. It could be boring, that's fine. It won't hurt my feelings done. You got to stand up, go to the bathroom or whatnot, please do it, uh, but we'll get into it. So. It's, it's just what the presentation says, okay? There's nothing worse to be around coaches that want other people to do things for them, okay? And the head coaches are nodding right now. I can already tell who the head coaches are, okay? And the assistant coaches are kind of looking around. It's that whole Urban Meyer thing, right? And you all, you all seen that before where he talks about, you know, assistant coaches are the first ones to bitch and complain, okay? Behind your back, but yet they don't want to put the work in. So which one is it, okay? And if any of you are sitting here wondering, what am I? Ask somebody that you trust. Okay, I can't express enough. You've got to be willing to have a hard conversation with everybody. Always. It's got to be a part of your program. Okay? So which goes back to if you want success, I'm not talking about wins or losses. Okay? Those are a byproduct. And I know that's a cliche thing, but we really didn't. Like I have two of my former assistants sitting over here from Prairie. I didn't talk about wins or losses. Okay? What I did talk about is doing things the right way. And if you do that, you got to build it. But as a coach and as this group of guys sitting in here, you can't expect other people to build it for you. Okay? I think that's the biggest reason, or one of the biggest reasons why head coaches fail. They're not ready to go build. And if you're not ready to get your toolbox out and get it dirty, you're in the wrong profession. Okay? Especially in the football. There's some sports I think you can get away with it. This one is not. Okay? And so. Really, that's going to be the gist of what we're going to talk about today. So I appreciate you taking time to come in, and we'll get going. So first thing I think is really important, first requirement is you have to get to that spot with your athletes. Okay, You have to get to be where Dean Smith is. No drama, no BS, right there. And it's got to be eye-to-eye -eye contact. We've all coached the guys that don't want to look at us, right? And man, is it frustrating. What's it going to take to get to that point? <coughs> Yelling usually doesn't work. It's never worked for me, right? It did when I was young, and I learned real fast. You want to turn kids off? Yell at them nonstop. And I get some of us are yellers in here, okay? But there's still a way to yell and still be right about it and do it the right way. But, again, if Michael Jordan can listen to Dean Smith, you're telling me any of our athletes can't. The biggest thing I want you to think about is this. The athletes you have are not a deck of cards in high school football, fellas. You can't trade them in, okay? You get what you get. you got to play your debt. <coughs> and how you go about playing it is all up to you and the time and amount of effort you put in, okay? And I know half of you here probably don't work in the building you coach in, I would guess. Maybe even more than that, all right? That seems to be a thing where it's going away more and more. So it's hard to make those connections during the school day. If you are in the building, that's where you got to make it. you got to do it. you got to find lunch. you got to find the hallway. you got to find somewhere. But at the end of the day, 
if you can't get there with your best players, frankly, all of them, but your <laughs> best ones especially, and that big moment comes and it's 32, and you're not there, don't expect the result. You didn't build it. Okay? And I tell you, I was listening to the Sauk Prairie with Clay talk about things like that. You've got to put the time in. You can't show up and drive the Ferrari. It's not a rental car here. Okay? And we're not getting paid big money to do this thing. We all want to do it to provide kids a great opportunity. I hope. If that's the really your goal, then get there with your athletes. Okay? Next. Second, we all have to have tough skin. This is not like new here. Okay? But understand, in all of your communities, at least if you're the ones like the ones I was in, I've been in some great communities, I've met great people. People say, why'd you move all around? I chose to. Okay? I've met great people along my journey, I'll tell you about here in a little bit. But the bottom line is, you better have tough skin. Okay? And not kind of tough skin, then we're right underneath the first layer, it goes away. People want to bury us. Right? I mean, we're in a tough position right now where we're attempting to get 50 to 100 players to all buy into the same thing, <coughs> along with coaches, along with parents. There's going to be naysayers. And you better have tough skin, and you got to be willing to have that tough conversation. Okay? Next. <coughs> got to understand this. The only people going to criticize you are the ones doing less. Okay? I didn't know this when I was young. Okay? When I was about 30, I started to realize it. And then when I'm, now I'm 41 and out of coaching for right now, and probably will be done coaching. I'll help here and there where it's needed. But and the time of my life is right now, that is so true. And if you really think about that, the time and effort that everybody in this room puts in, who are the ones that are bitching at you at the end of the day? Okay, and it doesn't matter what level it is, but that's the bottom line, okay? So, next up. These two <laughs> phrases, if they're part of your culture, or allowed to be said in your culture, they gotta go, okay? It's the whole Yoda thing with Tribe. And I know some people in here are Star Wars. I'm not even a Star Wars guy, but I can't begin to tell you how big of a culture change and shift in Parade Sheen we had when that went away. I'll try to be there today, Coach. All right, yeah, right, okay? I'll try to get my homework done tomorrow. Yeah, right, all right? Yeah, I'll try really hard this next play. And they go like half hard, okay? It just doesn't work. And it can't just go away from your players. Your coaches have got to quit saying this. All right, guys, we're going to give this a try today in practice. We're going to, you know, get this great cover three, and we're going to slant the tackles over, and we're going to give this a shot and a try. It's fake, okay? I really do believe that. You've got to get it out. And when people say it, make them rephrase themselves. I'm going to do this. We're going to do this today. And that's not being demanding, that's being truthful. If you try at anything, you ain't, you're you not going to succeed. You might get lucky, that's great, but overall, it's got to go. And that's one of the main things, at least in my stop and pray machine, that we got rid of. Period. Okay? And, and when you call people out for saying it, you know, sometimes a guy would joke with it, or I would too, but it, it, you, know, you don't go up to a kid and say, I sold you not to say try. It's not that. It's like, rephrase what you're saying, please. And I go as a head coach and go around my coaches and doing this and practice. If they say it, I come over to the players and start calling the coaches out on it. That's when it becomes fun. Coach, you're not supposed to say that, really? Oh, yeah, you're right. And so you move on, okay? And I can't, it goes along, that one always happens in the off season, right? I can't make it tonight, I got basketball. Okay, fair enough. But what are you going to do to make it up, okay? I can't, the, the, the biggest one is on max day, right? Well, on max days in the weight room. I can't do that. I, can't, I know I can't get that 315, all right? It's just got to go. It just cannot be a part of your culture. Those two simple phrases make the world of difference. Next. In addition to that, so Urban Meyer stuff here, that's got to be gone. Those three letters are even worse. Okay, the BCD, the blame, complaining, and defending. Across program lines. All the way from the parent fireside chats, because we never get roasted at that, right? Okay? <laughs> to, to your players blaming, to your coaches blaming the players, it's a horrible triangle if you don't get that fixed up. You cannot go BCD. Okay? That's another big area we worked on a lot with our culture in Prairie Machine, and we got it right. <coughs> All right, and it stopped. Okay? 
And so when it stops, and again, people start holding each other accountable, it becomes really fun and really cool. But again, you gotta build it. You gotta talk about this stuff daily. You gotta send huddle messages out. Hashtag, they all love hashtags, right? BCD, hashtag, no BCD, hashtag, no try, et cetera, et cetera. Constant reminders year round. There's a, such a thing as too much and not enough, okay? We've all had coaches when they send huddle messages out, these like things that are eight texts long, and I can't follow this shit. Okay? Just send them. Simple right there. We're having a lift tonight. No BCD. Don't give me an excuse. Don't blame your mom because she got mad at you and then you're going to defend your actions of missing your lift. That's not acceptable. Okay? Just a simple right to the point. And that's what I found in 20 years. Gets through to kids a lot easier. Don't try. Boom. They know it. BCD. They know it. Above the line. They know it. Okay? Next. This is another one that we've Really, I feel passionate about. Okay, and some of you know me, and here's some of you don't. I don't do drama. Period. Okay. I don't do well with it. I don't like it. But some people in this world, that's what they live off of. That's what they strive off of. I've had coaches that love drama. There's nothing better than having an assistant coach go to the Walmart aisle on Saturday and try and defend some call that I made. Okay. And it just stirs it. Okay. It's got to go. It's got to go. And when you get it out of your program, it's a beautiful thing. Am I saying you can get rid of it when you got 80 dudes fully? No. I'm not saying that at all. But I am saying when 78 of them get rid of the drama, the other two usually get squashed. All right? And so I feel really passionate about that, not having that. I've implemented that in on Alaska's um, culture. We'll talk about it in a little bit, but no drama, period. Next. Palms up's got to go. Okay, we've all been the palms up coach. Right? Bad call, we go palms up. Right? And so when that happens, that is a horrible look. If you got your quarterback that does that, please get it fixed. Okay? <laughs> if you do that, get it fixed. I used to do that. Bad calls happen, my hands go in the pocket. You walk around. That looks a lot better than this. All that stuff going on. All right? Really, quite frankly, not the quarterback, but they're the one that always gets watched. But if you're starting your season off next year and you got a quarterback that's palms up guy, you better find a new quarterback. Or don't expect good play. Because last time I checked, there's 11 guys trying to stop him. And he's going to get stopped at some point. He's got to get up and go. Okay? It can't be this. That's terrible body language. And it's something that's really, really hard to get. Basketball coaches love to do this. I've watched this this year a lot. Okay? Including Mars. And it's okay, just re remind. That's all you have to do. But that piece of body language right there is so powerful if you can get that to stop. And then go watch film. And then what becomes really fun is when you call out other teams on film. But look at this guy after you made this big play. Palms up, coach. Yep. Okay. So don't go palms up, ever. All right. And catch yourself doing it or catch your coaches doing it because it happens a lot more than often. I'm doing it right now. I don't mean to, but that's just what it is. All right. Next. So I really, really feel passionate about getting those things, I guess, removed from your program. That's what has to happen. You've got to make a decision. And everybody's culture in here is different. Everybody's at different stages. Okay, we got programs in here struggling and getting ready to go on the rise. We got programs that have been there. We got programs that have played late in the playoffs sitting in here. Okay, I don't know where you're at or what needs to go, but again, when we go back to the philosophy, I'm sure all of you could find one of those things, four things that I talked about that got to go. That took 20 years for me to get to those four things, okay? And go get get after it with your program, right? This is all my opinion, okay? I'm a big proactive coaching guy. I follow this stuff all the time. If you don't, I would highly recommend getting on it. This is not a plug for proactive coaching. They're certainly not paying me to say it, okay? But I'm big into proactive coaching. A couple of their thoughts and processes here. This is my opinion, along with a lot of other readings, of why failure happens with our student athletes. It's really simple. Okay? They make a bad play, they go BCD. All right? We have to talk about that. We have to have that conversation. It's really simple. They either don't trust their coaches, which is usually drama related, because they probably heard their parents were bashing the coach all weekend long, so he has to come back. Okay? So that they don't trust the coach, they don't trust their team, who knows what happened? Somebody stole somebody's girlfriend over the weekend, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Or they don't trust themselves. And it's just as simple as that. 
some players we've had these discussions with, okay, and it can end really fast. There's other players, you may have to sit two hours for them to finally realize where they're at here. And sometimes it's all, sometimes it's none. We've incorporated that into our school. Now, I don't ask them, but the school I was at before this, discipline issues come in. Put that right on the board. What's the issue? Is it your, is it your teachers? Is it your classmates? Or is it yourself? It's one of the three. It might be a combination of all. Most of the time, it's number three, though. You call them out, you not trust the coaches. Well, yeah, I do. Okay, good. What about your teammate? Yep, I love my teammates. Well, then what's the issue? Well, I just don't, and they can't ever finish it. You gotta walk them through, okay? So I feel really passionate about student failure happens with athletics because of the one of these three reasons. And the faster you can dig in and get it stopped, and then keep applying and building with them, the faster you can get the Dean Smith with them, okay? Don't let them off the hook. Make them talk about what is the real issue. Kids don't want to look in the mirror these days. A lot of times the problems are there. And to me, it's just as simple as that. Okay?